the mariners were all asleep, save one half dreaming at the stern, who gently bade me up or turn my eyes, long gazing on the deep the wind had stolen away, our skiff rested, as if its sails were furled, upon the tide which softly curled around a triple-breasted cliff, whose steeps, in mistiest daytime bright, were almost above nature white, bare-fronted to the westering moon, for the autumn night had passed its noon. I prayed that not a soul might wake, to be left utterly alone, that not the faintest human tone, the silence of that time might break, when, as of old the alien maids, who sanctified Dodona's shades, drew out the tale of human fate, from sounds of things inanimate, wont with inclined ear to listen, where branches rock or fountains rise, till high intelligences glisten in their intense Egyptian eyes, so I began, in that light breeze, glancing along those noted seas, to trace a harmony distinct, a meaning in each change of tone, and sound to sound more strangely linked, than in my awe I dared to own, but when in clearer unison that marvelous concord still went on, and, gently as a blossom grows, a frame of syllables uprose, with a delight akin to fear my heart beat fast and strong, to hear two murmurs beautifully blunt, as of a voice and instrument, a hand laid lightly on low chords, a voice that sobbed between its words. Stranger, the voice that trembles in your ear, you would have placed, had you been fancy free, first in the chorus of the happiest sphere, the home of deified mortality. Stranger, the voice that trembles here below, while in your life, enjoy the fame so loud, that utmost nations listen to its flow, and of its presence the old earth was proud. Stranger, the voice is Sappho's, weep, oh, weep, that the soft tears of sympathy may fall into this prison of the sunless deep, where I am laid in miserable thrall. Not of my mortal pride, my mortal woe would I now speak, there is no gentle maid, nor youth kind hearted, but has sighed to know, what was my love and how it was repaid. I had dear friends, who wept with bitter tears, to watch my spirit stream, which else had run, in fullness and delight, its course of years wasted and parched by that relentless sun dot of this far rock, and its miraculous power, they heard, and marveled, and with sedulous prayer conjured me not to lose one precious hour, but seek the cure of all my misery there. The gods, they argued in their fond esteem, love their harmonious daughter far too well, not to pour forth on her diseased dream the benediction of that soothing spell. When many a one, whose name will never shine on after ages, there has found release, how shall not she, already half divine, claim the same gift of spiritual peace? I told them, thousands in that chilly deep might find relief from their weak heart's annoy, Venus herself might try the counseled leap, and rise oblivious of her hunter boy, the mystery of the place might moderate th authentic passion of imperial Jove, but did they hope for me that common fate, they could know nothing of a poet's love. But vain my words the tender cruel hand of blinded friendship guided me away, I would have died in my own lesbian land, not in these regions of the waning day. Thus here, all bootless adorations paid, I dared the height of this tremendous shore, what were your agonies, ye hope betrayed, when to your bosom I came back no more. Of the mysterious path, that leads through death, from life to life, I must not speak to thee, enough that now I breathed another breath, beyond the portals of mortality. A stream received me, whose ethereal flow came to my senses like a perfumed sigh, from the rich flowers that shed their light below, and bowed their jeweled heads as I passed by. And opposite a tide of sound was driven, that made the air all music, and from far glimmered bright faces through a dead gold heaven, as in an earthly night star follows star. At last I came to a gigantic gate, that opened to a steep ascending lawn, whence rose a temple, whose white marble state was fused into that gold and purple dawn. Sisterly voices were around me chanting, Hail, thou whom song has numbered with the blessed, from fear, and hope, and passion's feverish panting, pass to thy crown, a muse's glorious rest. Entranced I entered, but there stood between me and the fane, a queenly form and stern, upon whose brow, in letters all of sheen, I saw the ancient name of Themis Burn. She laid her hand on mine, it felt so cold, she asked me, whether I, whose soul had earned this highest heaven, now felt serene and bold, then I into my conscious self returned. She asked me, whether all that heart distress, in which my yielding womanhood had erred from this my goddess state with bitterness and shame was seen, I answered not a word. Then, piercingly, she asked me whether he, 
before whose charms I prostrated so low my woman's worth, my poet's dignity, was clear for God semicolon I answered slowly, no dot strange strength was in me, with consummate scorn, I spoke of that Apollo, who could deem, that by his magic leap, the true love lorn could wake to bliss, as from a troublous dream dot I said, the promised peace, the calm divine, the cold self power, and royalty of will, or there, or elsewhere, never could be mine, for I was Sappho, Finn's Sappho still dot there was dead blackness on the golden sky, there was dumb silence in the resonant air, but still I cried aloud in agony, heaven was not heaven, if Finn was not there dot with arms upraised, and towering looks averse, that fearful being uttered, be it so, blessing thou wilt not, thou shalt have a curse, high bliss though, you wilt not, thou shalt have deep woe dot thou hast defiled the gods most choicest hour, poesy, which in chaste repose abides, as in its atmosphere, that placid flower thou hast exposed to passion's fiery tides, within the cold abyss, degraded, lone, beneath the rock whose power thou hast blasphemed, from thy parnation, long expectant, throne, lie banished, till by some new fate redeemed. Dot when will that new fate be? I linger on, I know not what I wish, oh! Tell me, thou that weepst for one thou wouldst have smiled upon, dear stranger, tell me where is Finn now? Here pause the voice, and now, methought, I spoke, but what I know not, for there passed a shock throughout my senses, like a lightning stroke, I started to my feet, the tall white rock walled the far waste of silent sea, the morn light lined the east, on grey white wings upborne, 